Do you find yourself in a state of mental fog? Or another way to say it would be not feeling clear-minded, maybe out of it, or a bit drowsy. Um, this is something that I see in a lot of clients and patients that I work with. And what I see in the brain maps that I look at, in the quantitative EEGs, is that people who report this as a fairly dominant aspect of their life, there tends to be an appearance of uh, the theta brainwave as fairly dominant, um, especially in the frontal areas of the brain and the left prefrontal cortex. So uh, a few things that I think are correlated with this, um, and this is just based on the patterns that I notice in myself as well as in a lot of people that I work with, uh, is that, so first of all, I am a big proponent of mindset, as you, as you know, um, but I think there's certain things where, yes, uh, and a growth mindset is really important and our belief in our ability to change our brain is really important, but if we don't set the stage with certain aspects of our life and certain conditions, it can make that change a lot more difficult. So I often get asked, like, how long is this going to take to change my brain? When will I notice the difference? But the thing is, is that if we're not complementing a lot of this other mindset stuff we do and the mindfulness and all that, if we're not complementing that with other things, um, such as like different conditions in our life, it just robs our brain body system of the resources it needs to create change and to, to do what it needs to do. So three things that I think can be very helpful for us to amplify and accelerate um, the changes that we want to make in our brain body system is uh, first of all diet. So when I worked as a school counselor, I was often asked to work with students who were very, who were falling asleep, who were very drowsy. And one of the first things I always asked was what they had for breakfast that day. And too many times than I care to remember, the answer was nothing or sugary cereal or maybe a soda. And uh, that was, you know, hours before the lunch period. So just making a small adjustment like that made a very big difference in those kids' lives when we added a bit more protein and fruits and veggies and just a bit more balance to that. Um, sleep is another one. I want to cover that in another video. But the other thing that a lot of people don't think about is the interactions we have with people and who we surround ourselves with. And the reason why I say this is because first thing um, I notice in a lot of the different brain maps is that people who have a, a severe amount or significant amount of dysregulation often have a history with adverse childhood experiences or trauma and even recent trauma um, in their more recent past that often is related to social relationships, um, social interactions. And so there's a lot of unconscious triggers that can activate us and it can activate us into a stress response. And what I see in myself, as well as what I know happens in different people, as well as just the nervous system kind of cascade of responses, is that we can go into this hyperactivation, a hyper arousal of our system. And then uh, a short while after, because we've gone into that, there can be a bit of a collapse. Um, and in myself, I have noticed that when there is, you know, a fairly significant activation of that, it is followed by a kind of out of it type of mode, a type of brain state. So that's just something to think about in terms of when you're getting that fatigue, um, you know, definitely think about your diet. For me, anything with um, a lot of sugar, processed food, small particles, I'm sure many of you have heard of all that stuff uh, causing different effects in our brain. And I know for me that it, it definitely does. So you can keep an eye on that. Um, but also the interactions that you have and what you know, what kinds of stress responses you might be having without you even knowing it, that you then later, you know, you feel very depleted. So just think about that and think about um, definitely cultivating, nurturing and psychologically safe relationships in your life. Um, and then third, which is in line with that, is to notice patterns. We are pattern recognition creatures. We are designed for this. The more that we can start to notice the different rhythms that we have in our brain states, um, the better we can get at cultivating the right conditions to, to deal with them ahead of time in, in like a preventative way. Um, but also as we notice patterns, we are becoming noticers, which is a metacognitive strategy. And that is something that actually activates new networks in our brain, really powerful, strong networks in our brain that can help us get better at, um, you know, recognizing what works for us, what doesn't, 
and then problem solving and doing kind of long-term projections into how to, to deal with those things. So it kind of updates our algorithms by noticing these patterns. So if you can, you know, there's certain times of day, there's certain days of the week, notice which, what happens during those times and why we're in those brain states. And none of these brain states, whether we're talking about kind of this, you know, mental fog or hyper alertness, hyper vigilance, they're not wrong or right um, or good or bad. It's just, do we want to be in those states? So there's some times where we're going to want to be a bit drowsy, like as we're falling and drifting off to sleep, or we want to be hyper alert during certain situations. The question is, can, can we shift into what we want? Can we, um, can we notice it and can we do, get into our desired state when we want to? So those are just some ideas of how to think about our brain states and where we're at, our internal state, our physiological state, and to just know that it's not just about mindset. Um, that's key, but if we don't cultivate the right other kinds of conditions in our life, it makes change a lot harder. So uh, just, I'll leave you with that today. And also know I have some upcoming group classes coming up online, so you can go to stephaniefay.com and I have a whole bunch coming up in July and August, September, and I'm really excited about the material I'm sharing. It's not stuff that I share on my podcast or on my YouTubes. Um, it's very interactive, so I hope to see you there. Thank you.